Cheers! Welcome to Movie Bitches! A Retro Review, episode 20! Tonight we're reviewing Wet Hot American Summer! <laughs> Wet Hot American Summer. First things first, shout out to our wine sponsor, Wing. Try wing.com slash movie bitches. You get $22 off your first month of wine. Summer has arrived. Yeah. So I Summer's like almost gone. Yeah, it's like the middle of August, damn it. Um, <laughs> Whatever. We tried, we tried. I was uh, like, Andrew, I think we absolutely have to do this movie. We've been talking about it forever. It's one of my favorite comedies of all time. It is in the top 10 comedies for me. I mean, it's a classic. You actually introduced me to this movie. Did I? At camp, when we showed it to a bunch of, you teenagers. know, teenagers. Oops. <laughs> Right, I forgot about that. Yeah, that was the first time I'd ever seen it. That's awesome. Yeah. That's good on so, me. Yeah, yeah right. thanks. Well, yeah, so what I would say is pause. Yes. Go fucking watch this yeah. movie. It's on Netflix. If you can, go watch Sleepaway Camp first. Yes. Watch, watch our Sleepaway watch Camp our Review. Watch our Sleepaway Camp Review. Go watch Meatballs also. If you have the time, go to a summer camp as a counselor <laughs> slash camper. Yeah. You know, in I don't your know how life. old you are. I don't know how old you are. And then come back and watch this. Because it really helps. Yeah. Yeah, I think particularly having been a camp counselor, it really adds some flavor to watching this movie. Oh, you're putting us in charge of children? <laughs> sure. Well that that is for sure. Oh, oh no, this feels like too much responsibility for for irresponsible me. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. Obviously we showed 14 year olds? I'm not even sure. Went out American Summer, yeah. so that was fun. Yeah. We changed their lives for the better. Yeah, we absolutely did. I don't care what the parents in that lawsuit say. We did not no, just kidding. I do believe we also showed them Clueless, and they asked me what Noxzema was, and mm. I got very sad. <laughs> I think this movie is fucking hilarious. It is like almost exactly my sense of humor. Right. It's my favorite kind of humor. Sure. All of these jokes that are disguised as the stupidest thing ever, but it's so clever. Yes. And, and some people try to do it. You know, you think about like, not another teen movie or scary movie. Like those kind of parodies right. to me are very stupid. Yes. And this is like genius. And it's a really fine line. And that's why I honestly think Austin Powers works really well. Oh yeah. It's stupid. Oh yeah. But it it's is, also really smart. <laughs> and it's very well researched. Yes. It is a love letter to James Bond Absolutely. Movies. And the best parodies work if you are aware of all the references and content, right. they work great, but the best ones work even, even if, if you, you don't, don't know. And as a because kid, they're funny on their own. Once you start to like watch more movies and, and get all the references, it's even funnier. Exactly. And that's why they're fun every time you watch them because yes. you pick something up. Yeah, you're like, oh, and there's a little nugget. Oh, I didn't realize that before. Oh my God, that's great. So it starts and the credits are coming up, blah, blah, blah. It gets to casting by Susie Ferris. And I was like, yes, you go, Susie Ferris. You get it, Susie Ferris. Two for you, Susie Ferris. Love it. She nailed it. I mean, the cast is unmatched in its raw, undiscovered talent. Exactly. Like, this is... I mean, it's insane how many people... Unbeatable, I would say. I mean, the amount of people that were unknowns that have now become mega stars... Absolutely. ...after the fact yeah. is insane. I mean, pretty much the entire cast. And pretty much, I mean, basically... Uh, Janine Garofalo and David Hyde Pierce, two of my absolute favorite people on the entire planet. Yeah. Hands down. Oh, she's definitely on Fabulous. Or she's, she's been there for a while. Yeah. She was there at the grassroots. <laughs> she has a bead store. If you haven't checked out Janine Garofalo's stand-up, it's great. It is an aspiration to own a bead store. And hopefully it'll be called something like, let it bead. Bead goes on. I'm talking about a proper bead store where you walk in and say, what's that music, Tegan and Sarah? You're goddamn right, it's Tegan and Sarah. They signed on and that's how they got a lot of the financing because they were the only names at the wow, time. Wow, that's so crazy. But they signed on and then that's what kind of clinched the budget because they kept almost getting funding and then not, and then almost wow. getting funding and then not. And it was, they made it for uh, 1.8 million. I mean, I guess Paul Rudd was pretty famous. I mean, he had already done Clueless and stuff. So like he was at least right. on the radar. Right. But pretty much everyone, I mean, this is Bradley Cooper's first movie. Yeah, that's crazy. He missed his graduation at the actor's studio to be in this movie. I mean, I think that's okay. I mean, that's, 
That's like, that should be like the, the goal, right? Yeah. That should be like the poster, right, exactly. poster child. Like obviously um, David Wayne and Michael Showalter and Michael Ian Black were part of Stella and Michael Showalter and David Wayne wrote it right. based on their own camp experiences. But there's also like, you can tell there's like a love for those movies, oh, right? Yes. You know, like it's at the same time, it's a send up of camp, 80s camp movies. It's yes. also like a love letter to oh, them. Yes. Like the fact that everyone is in their 20s. I don't know, oh, 16, which at the end, 18, at and the end when she's like, I'm 16, it's like, yeah, Right, yeah. I mean, we're all gonna be in our late 20s, 20s by then. then. Well, let's say nine, that way we can be here by 9.30. Well, no, why don't we say 9.30 and then make it your beeswax to be here at 9.30? I mean, we're all gonna be in our late 20s by then. I just don't see any reason why we can't be places on time. We should just make it our beeswax to, to be, be there, there at 9.30. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, but I have something at 11, so I have to leave early. Right? I swear nobody had at 11. You just got like a trapper keeper full of appointments, right? No, I just I have something at 11 that I can't change again because I already moved it twice. Is that in the show? I already changed out? it twice. You mean in the, the Netflix. Netflix show? Yeah. I don't know. I watched the first season. Yes. And it was okay. It was okay. I mean... It got a little better and then it was like, like I just said, okay. This movie is pretty much perfection and lightning in a bottle. Yes. So when they said they were remaking it yep. or whatever, doing the prequel, yep. I was like, yeah. You know, I was like, yay, because I want all of these people I love to be, be, together be again. in things and, yeah. and be creative together and yep. all of the above. But we, we don't need to talk about the, the Netflix one. No. It's fine. it's fine. I don't know if it comes up. You guys aren't supposed to be out of your bunks. You're in trouble. It's supposed a, to be in your bunks. Yeah. You're in trouble. <laughs> I, just, I, I die every time. Every time. It's just like, because I'm oh, making like, an hour or whatever. At like 7 a.m. What is that about? Like, it just seemed like the longest day right? ever. I was like, they, when they were like, oh, it's only 9 30, I was like, dang, they really got a lot of stuff done. <laughs> but that's what I love about it too. It's so stupid. But I just love it. So it's like, you know, five in the morning we're supposed to, and they've just been making out nonstop. I, yeah. I don't know. Maybe yeah. I guess they woke up and they started making out. Oh, but morning breath, whatever. No, I think they snuck, snuck in. Oh, they came. Yeah. They woke up, brushed their teeth, came over, I mean, made I, out. They're like twelve. I don't know if they brushed their teeth. That's what I'm saying. That's like gross. Anyway, it's whatever. It's pretty gross. Just the, all of them running across the. Oh, oh, oh. The oh, way oh. people run in this movie. The the motif <laughs> of. Running yeah, oh, in yeah. this movie. Oh, yeah. We'll get into it. Oh my god. We'll get into it. Oh my god. No, for this watch in particular, I mean, I love everyone in this movie and I fucking love this movie, but yeah. for this watch, I was like really getting into Janine and David Hyde Pierce. Like, me too. Their stuff was making me laugh the hardest. Absolutely. And you know what was really interesting is typically, I, whenever I watch this movie, I'm like always like about Paul Rudd. Right. But this time, this time it was, I mean, he was still great, of course, but, but it like, wasn't, it wasn't was like, my favorite part of it. No, I was like, I don't know, Paul Rudd, this is like giving me some ache vibes. You know, like, he's such an asshole. Right, and I mean, then, that's the point. And, yeah. Well, right, exactly. But I think because of just where I'm at in life in 2018. Sure. You know, that I'm just like, mm -mm, I'm not here for this. It aged the worst of it, the stuff. Exactly, because you're just like, I don't have time for the asshole. Get out of my life. Fuck you, Dyke. Why are you being such an asshole? I gotta finish my breakfast. I love you, baby. So good talking to you. I, well, I do love that, like, I mean, did you go to camp? So, okay, I went to camp twice. Did you go to, like, sleepover? Yeah, sleepover oh, camp? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like, in, in New Mexico, in the woods. Oh. I absolutely hated it. I wrote my mom and dad postcards being like, I hate it. Like, it was basically like, here, what's that campo on? Hello, mother. Yeah, hello, yeah, mother. Yeah. Here, I, like, I hated camp. Oh no! Because I like the, the outdoors. outdoors. I like camping for one night. So you were an indoor kid. I was, I was an indoor kid. I, I mean, I, like, I, I liked a lot of the activities. I liked yeah. archery. Yeah. I don't like horseback riding. They smell. Arts I, and crafts. I sure. Um, I probably would have loved the theater troupe. I don't think we had theater at my camp. Mm. The food was absolutely terrible. I hated cafeteria. Like, I, I'm just too bougie. I'm too I was bougie like, for summer camp. I was like, junk food? Bring it on. Oh my god. I never get any junk food? Bring it on. No, I definitely did not like being outside and was t terrified that I would be murdered um, most of the time. But I had a lot of fun oh, well, making good. lanyards. And, <laughs> yes, um, you and the lanyard. And, you know, getting gossipy with, you know, sure. people and, you know, 
the counselor is getting like, oh, I, oh, that boy likes so and so. Right. Blah, blah. They're like the you know the the soap opera of of camp course or of whatever. course. Oh. <laughs> and she sees David Ed Pierce. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> and he, <laughs> he spills the cow. It's so hard to hold a mug. I know. <laughs> there and her. It was so, so good. good this time. So good. The awkward interaction. Oh my god. I love it. I love them so much. We get introduced to Michael Showalter. Yes. Coop. Yep. Who's desperately in love with yes. Katie. Oh, do you like watching Andy and me make out? Yeah. I don't know. Blah, 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 whatever. Oh, you're so funny. You're, you're, you're so funny. So no, funny. it's really funny. I love it's, it. It's really hilarious. <laughs> oh, Coop, you know I'm just kidding. Come I on. know. And it's very, very funny. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm gonna find you a girl today, Coop. Oh yeah. Well, I guess I'll cancel that order of onions and <laughs> Limburger <laughs> cheese. Well then, I guess I'll cancel that order of onions and Limburger cheese I made for lunch today. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. I want you inside me. What? Oh, oh just, just hey, from <gasps> from before. What's, hey, what's up? Just what's up from before? I want you inside me. What? Hmm. Oh, hey, what's up? I was just from, from before. What? It's so. Also, I just love that he says to her, I want, I want you, you inside, inside me. <laughs> this time in particular, I noticed all of Janine Garofalo's awkward air quotes that are wrong. I thought I'd take a chance and come over and introduce myself. Like, she's always, like, <laughs> air quoting the wrong words Good. and stuff. Good. <laughs> introduce myself. Space, the final frontier. <laughs> I have to go meet Jim Stansel. You know Jim? I, I think maybe one of my favorite moments of this movie <laughs> Is and we're jumping way ahead. We'll get there, but wish. And then you can have the whole rest of the day to learn about planets, stars, pulsars, heliocentricity, gravitational collapse, and the science of celestial mechanics. Her delivery, oh, I, I per perfection, perfection, perfection. Well, that's what, everyone knows exactly what movie they're in, which is really amazing, yes. considering how specific this tone is. Yes, I think it comes down to good writing, good direction, yep. and they really, I think, set the tone for everyone else. It was exactly. like a, 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 and I mean, not to take away from the actors. I mean, everyone is very talented. Get, but like, exactly. The, like, even the people who haven't become as famous, right? Oh, yeah. You know, like Marguerite Monroe, sure, Moreau, Moreau. Or whatever, the girl that plays Abby, like, um, everybody oh, is great. We'll get into we'll it. We'll talk about Abby. What? I thought I'd take a minute to introduce myself, and then he shakes her hand with the trowel. Oh, yes, yeah, so, the trowel breaks. I mean, we get our first pottery smell. Oh. It gets me every, every single time. time. <laughs> I love a good fourth wall break. Oh yeah. Like. And I feel like it's really not popular anymore, and it really bums That's me out. True. Like, it's a wink to the camera, yes. but it's a yes. smart wink. Just and that sort of, like, meta-ness of the, like, oh, in post-production, like, let's have the same exact... Uh, yeah. Pottery smash Pottery noise. Pottery smash noise. Or, like, eight Wilhelms. Because, <laughs> obviously, if you're making a parody of another genre or other movies, you have to really know movies. Yes. And so that, like, yes. adds to, like, yes. my love of these kind of things. Oh, I'm an associate professor in astrophysics. Oh, what do you teach? teach. Uh, well, like, like I said, astro astrophysics. astrophysics. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm the, I'm the director, so <laughs> I would know if, if you were. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Me? No, I, I don't work over there. No, I know. I'm, I'm the director. I would know if you were. Oh. <laughs> right, you would know that. And then she's trying to get him to, oh, you know, would you like to come over and teach some of the kids science? It would no, be no, really no. great. Oh my God, it would be really? so amazing. I said no! I said no! I just love David Hyde Pierce. Yes. He's down to clown. Yeah. He's so funny. Yeah. I think he's underutilized. I agree. Uh, he also, he's a thespian. Uh, yes. And he's fucking fabulous. I fucking love him. Yeah. But yeah, so the whole movie is vignettes. So we're bouncing oh, yes. back and forth, bouncing yes. back and forth. We get to meet Gene. Guy for young potatoes! Ah. Uh, I mean, okay. So at first you're like, oh god, and then by the end, you, every time I'm just like, yeah, it worked. <laughs> you know? So well, he's playing it so straight. Oh. Yeah. What's your glitch, Gene? Do listen to me, you fucked up little cigarette smoking piece of shit. I was in the Vietnam War. 
I read that his um, muse or whatever, like he was channeling Rambo. Okay. Like, that idea sure. of like the crazed. Right. In the early 80s was like the crazed Vietnam vet. I've seen more fucked up shit happen in five minutes out there and you'll see in your whole fucking life. Yeah, well, Gene, I'm really sorry. You know, if I could change history, I would. Fuck you! They were messing with dick cream. What? Oh, what would you say? Stick, stick team, stick team, stick ball. Shut up, shut up, leave me alone. You know, stick team, stick ball. Forget about it, go away, leave me alone. And they just really nailed every kind of stereotype. Oh, like, yeah. Like, once again, in a loving way, but like the D&D kid with the cape, you know. A crown class B dungeon master. So if any of you would like to play D&D today, please speak now, or forever hold your peace. Uh, we are looking for a druid, and you right. have cast your spell over oh, me. Really? Oh. Ew, get away from me, douchebag. Douchebags are hygienic products, I take that as a compliment. Yes. Like, I knew that kid. Like, <laughs> there was so many instances in this movie where it's like, I knew that kid exactly. I knew that counselor exactly. I met that person. <laughs> I really want to get a Paul Rudd doing the pole dance. Doing the pole dance with the finger, and then yeah, we'll see you in macrame. Okay, we'll see you in macrame. <laughs> you know, love that too. See, see you, you in macrame. In his Bruce Springsteen outfit. Yeah, it's good. It's so good. Everything's. The, the costumes oh. are perfection. Yes, it's. I mean, the costumes really are sleepaway camp. Meets. Oh my god! I mean, the short shorts, oh, the yeah. crop tops, yeah. like the the Bruce Springsteen guy. You know, the nerdy kids. You know, oh, it's yeah. like the D and D kid, yeah. the goth chick. Yep. Yeah. Mork from Ork. I love you that know? they really like the, in the credits too. That's her name. Yeah. Goth chick. It's like Cure Girl or something. Yeah, Cure oh, chick yeah. or something. Yeah. The mall rat. You know, like the kid that. Is like goes to Ren Fair every year and has a fake British accent. I knew him. <laughs> he exists. And we'll talk about the Mork for More kid for a while because he's my favorite. Every time they're laying down, he's doing this. Maybe we should just let them die. No, my friend Jimmy isn't there. You have a friend? I'm kidding. So then we get to the to the drama group. I mean, oh my god, this is so funny to me too because I, I love that the, the the whole conceit is that this is. The last day of camp. Right. And yet, they're just starting, they're just starting auditions and auditions rehearsals. And yeah. rehearsals. Yeah. I, the whole thing the happens whole thing. in six hours. Sorry, Ben is producing and I'm, I'm director doing. slash choreographing. But if you can't carry a tune, don't come into the audition environment and waste your time. For serious, okay? Okay, and bring a lot of movement clothes. AKA and jazz shoes, AKA dance belts, lycra, and such. So be prepared, be enthusiastic, and leave your bullshit attitude and baggage at the door, because we don't need it. Hey, you guys! Bradley Cooper, I mean, obviously with this was his first movie, but like he really looks like that 80s asshole. Like he looks like the 80s villain in every 80s movie. Okay. His face, like he, Wedding sure. Crashers. Like he's that guy. He's like the asshole boyfriend. Like that's just his face. Sure. He has, you know, grown out of that. Right. But he's so perfectly cast in this because at first you think, oh, he's this preppy. Right you know, 80s asshole douchebag or whatever, and then it Very gets... quickly for me, you're like, oh. Well, I mean, I mean. Oh, of course he's the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> and then, oh, we get introduced to Molly Shannon's culottes. Oh, and, and then Molly, Molly Shannon. Shannon. I have just the softest spot in my heart for Molly Shannon. She's fabulous. She's so wonderful. Her smile, I think, yeah. could literally, like, just... Have you heard her Mark Maron interview? No. She just seems like the best. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, obviously, but, like, also, like, in real life, she seems like the fucking best. Absolutely. The crayon is right there. We could draw with the markers. Listen, Valerie, I need you to be helpful here, okay? But there's only one crayon left in Sprout. There are okay. literally hundreds, hundreds of, of colored, colored markers. Colored. <laughs> 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 just the whole storyline with her and the kid. Gail, yeah, listen to me. Ron's who he is. And you can't change that. I know. Okay? Yeah, his parents clearly are our therapist and he's just like 
walk her through it and you're like, this makes a lot of sense. Gail, I need you to say that you're okay. Yeah. <laughs> Gail, look at me. I want you to say, okay. Okay. Say you're okay. So good. He's he, and he's it's great. Oh, he's great. McKinley and the beekeeper. Oh my. Oh. Artie, I need you to take a shower. Oh my god. And there was always the fucking kid who didn't take a shower. Again. Always. 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 That guy was my sister. <laughs> For like a little bit, yeah. For a little bit. I mean, I. I feel like everyone's pretty ripe at camp. But Probably, right? You're like, uh, six weeks. And they're all gross. The shower, you know, it's like outside. You have to wear the foot flat. I don't want to do that. Good morning, everybody. Well, it's the last day of camp, and it will be sad to shut down WCFW for the summer. I love that the beekeeper, because I mean, we're introduced to him right and away in his VO. Voice. Yeah. Exactly. And I love that they set it up like, oh, it's this narrative the beekeeper, thing. Oh, and well, because like, in um, Meatballs, uh, Bill Murray, like there's a radio, like that's a very traditional exactly. DJ yes. explaining the yeah. plot. Oh, you know, here we go. Like, yeah, furthering right. the plot yeah, or whatever. Taking you through the day. Oh, you gotta get ready for the dance tonight or whatever. Yeah. And then I just love that, I mean, it's not really until it's a, a far the third act yeah. maybe yeah. that we realize that when they pan down, it's just plugged into nothing. Nothing. It's not talking to anyone. Beekeeper here. Oh my god. <laughs> that visual reveal. Oh my god, it's so good. Uh, I do love Paul Rudd's Durr face, though. I think he has the best Durr face, right? It's so good. It's so, oh my god. Well, and then I love his temper tantrum. <sighs> I love when he throws the fork. Right, oh my god. Takes out his aviators. <laughs> the kids in Cabin 5 want to watch the China Syndrome again, so you gotta run the Betamax. What can I say? They love it. <laughs> again? <laughs> of all things, the China Syndrome. And everyone just walks away from her and is ignoring her. Oh, yeah. I'm not Ruth Buzzy standing here? What are you, ignoring me? I am not Joe. I am not Ruth Buzzy standing here. I am no Ruth Buzzy standing here. <laughs> she shouts it like three times. Like three times. What am I, Ruth Buzzy? Standing here? Katie, you're hot, right? Okay. Like, I mean, I hot. guess. I guess, I mean, yeah. So what would you wear, you know, if you're like trying to impress a guy? Like, like clean, clean pants? pants? Clean pants? Pants. Pants, Katie. Come on, please. Pants. So would you, what would you, slacks? Beth. Slacks? Slacks? <laughs> so, so, so. I was just joking. I mean, unless, unless you're, you're joking. joking. Yeah. Yeah. So, so slacks then, or? You know, use a little moose. Moose, as in. No, it. Get out of town! No, I won't get out of town! And then her moose here! Oh my god. Oh. The disaster! Oh. The I was like, Flips Katie did over. her dirty! If Katie did that to her. I mean, I don't know. I, I kind of love it. She just did it to herself. I kind of love it. It's so good, but also terrible. There's also a lot of just like fully fully surreal scenes that I feel like are never addressed at all. I mean, or so basically... Like, there's no, like, resolution. It's just weird. Yeah. So, like, they're at the lake. Hey, Andy, can I take the speedboat out and drive it around? Yeah, whatever. And then Zach Gorth just, like, gets up and, like... Walks? Walks up the dock. <laughs> it's never even talked about. Well, because... Well, okay. Did you figure it out this time? Well, the only thing that I could come up with was that they needed to get him off of the dock so that she I could come up and... I think it's purely like, oh, we need his seat. Yeah. Exit right. Like, okay. <laughs> I think so. I, I don't know. There's a lot of things in the movie where the small budget, like, they work it into the plot. I'm like, well, we didn't have time or money for this, so, you know, obviously we're going to write a joke around it. Fabulous. Yep. yep. <laughs> I do love when Elizabeth Banks gets up on the dock. It's, like, so awkward. <laughs> or, like, <laughs> like trying in the bathing suit, just, like, trying to get up there. I mean, and who knew? I mean, she... Elizabeth Banks is so fucking funny. Oh, yeah. But I'm sure that she was being pigeonholed as just that beautiful, pretty... Like, sure. Before this movie. And before, because this I mean, was... although this might be her first movie, I'm not Wait, sure. Wait, what year did this come out? 2001. So this must have been... This was probably just before Rat Race. Elizabeth Banks is in the Rat Race. That's Amy Smart. Oh, it is Amy Smart. Oops. Oops. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, I'm just writing in my journal. Oh, my God. Oh, you mean a, a journal? Yeah, whatever. 
Guess I'm not all smart like you. Why is he writing in a journal? It's for me, myself, and I. And Am I? <laughs> So only three people see this. <laughs> he has a lot of private thoughts. <laughs> I mean, tell me that's not a sleep I can't oh. friends. Absolutely. I was waiting for a water balloon fight from yes. the roof. I was waiting for someone to yell, you fucks! You fucks! <laughs> I was waiting for a softball, a oh. short shirt, and lunch. I, I would have loved all of that. I mean, I guess we got Capture the Flag. We did get... We'll talk about Capture the Flag. There's so many things to talk about. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Help! Help! Help, Andy! I'm drowning! Oh, oh. shut up, Bobby! You're fine! <laughs> For all we know, he drowned. I mean, and then, because then the other kid, oh, what happened to my swimming buddy? My study buddy. I'm gonna tell him that you let him drown and then they throw him onto the ditch. I mean, that's another thing that I feel like is just like this weird, surreal thing just where it's like, like, and then these kids that either died right. or were abandoned on the side of the road. Never mentioned again. I fucking love it. <laughs> I do feel like this movie is a really. Is is a deal breaker for me. Like if you don't oh, if you like don't. this movie, we're I just feel like we're just not gonna have the same sense of humor. Right. Like, because it's true. Like you could really see this as just being stupid. Sure. And if you do, I feel like we're gonna have a lot of problems being friends, kind of thing. Because it's just, it's just so interesting. This genius. is like a litmus test. For this you, is a where for it's like, sure a litmus test. It's like how do you react to this? Okay, cool. We have the yeah. same sense of humor. We get. It's the not like oh. Um, it's a favorite movie from my childhood that I'm skewed right. on because I watched it as a kid. Right, right, right. It's like, brilliant. I was thinking, so Billy Madison I saw was also on Hulu. Ooh. When I was scrolling through. I mean, I fucking love that movie. Me too, but I'm like, I don't know if it's gonna hold up. I mean, I mean it might. Shampoo is better. <laughs> no conditioner. <laughs> Stop <laughs> looking at me, Swan. <laughs> it's so moronic. <laughs> Oh, it's too damn hot outside for a penguin to just be walking around. <laughs> but also, that is correct. <laughs> so like, I don't know, we might have to retro review it and see if it holds up because I don't know. I think I will still think it's very funny. Probably. I don't know if that's because I watched it as a kid. I was just going to say, I was just going to say. Was saying. I think I'll still probably enjoy it. Yep, but it might be because I have so much of like... So I've memorized the entire fucking uh, movie. Yeah, there you go. Oh my god. O'Doyle's Rule! O'Doyle's Rule! This is basically just a retro review of Billy Madison right now. Uh, there you go. Back to school. <laughs> Back to school. To, to, school, to prove to dad, dad that I'm, I'm not, not a fool. fool. Got my lunch packed up and my boots tied tight. I hope I don't get in a fight. <laughs> <laughs> Who would steal 30 bag lunches? Right. If peeing your pants is cool, no, consider me Miles Davis. Davis. So anyway. <laughs> Yeah, even Nancy, who only has like four lines, oh, is yeah. fucking. She's knitting her like endless. Oh my god! Well, orange and yellow like scarf with the, there's like the sun tea thing behind her. Well, in her bag that just says my stuff. Say I wanted to get a book on uh, um, camp directing. I guess would that be Henry? Henry library. The library. <laughs> well, and I love that at this point she's knitted an entire blanket. Like when we when when Janine Garoppolo comes. Three minutes before yeah, the him. The visual gags yeah. are just yeah. priceless. Yeah. And you pick up, like, sometimes you don't see them. And then right. you're like, oh my god, that was so funny. You, like, you really have to pay attention. Yeah, you have to look at all of it. I mean, she has one of my favorite lines. We'll get there. Oh. I love it. It's so good. It's for my birthday. <laughs> if you're going into town, can you pick me up something at the drugstore? Beth, come on. My husband's coming today, and I need some lube. The way she says it, I know. every time it gets me. <laughs> For my pussy. I love that it just accelerates oh, so right. quickly. Oh my god, Beth's going to town, Beth's going to right, town, right. everyone jump in. No, 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 come on, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, this I mean, this is 
Oh, again, one of the greatest montages of all time. Oh my god. I mean, it just is. It's like, it's brilliant. Yes. You get to town, it starts, and it's pot. Well, first no. it's fries. It's, first it's fries, and then it's pot, and then they're like... Cocaine. Cocaine. Dealing, yeah, cocaine in the alleyway. Beating up old women. Yeah, oh my god. And then they're just uh, going up the stairs, cracked and there's Amy Poehler just like completely cracked in, just like... Ah. And it's just like... Ah. Oh god, the needle. Oh, it freaks me out. Oh my god. Oh no. Janine just like dripping by herself in the corner. Always great to get to town, oh even if it's just for an hour. It's always fun to get away from camp, even for an hour. Hey, you guys, wake up! I just love how they play with time and space, yes. and like, oh, the prop work and the visual sight gags are just, br ugh, it's so good. We haven't even talked about Ken Marino. Oh fuck, we haven't even talked about Ken Marino and Ken Marino's afro. Oh my god. So and his short shorts. Yeah. Oh, the short and shorts. And the Birkenstocks. Yep. yep. Oh, there's so oh, many Birkenstocks. It's so good. Oh, I love that it. That was such a thing. Oh my god. Yeah. I mean, they nailed it. Yeah. The puka shells. Oh yeah. Oh my god. Uh, I'm just gonna go uh, fondle my sweaters. What did oh, you say? Just gonna, just gonna make some things, cheddar. Things, make fondue with cheddar. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Leave me alone. No, I didn't. I said I'm gonna fondue with cheddar. I was thinking about making fondue with cheddar cheese for dinner tonight. No, Gene, that is not what you said. That's when we first started. Oh, we first meet the mixed vegetable. H. John Benjamin. Yeah, Bob. Bob. It's so funny that his name is Gene. Unbelievable. Gene. Bob. All right, enough. Enough. I'm not doing this. Yes, you are. No, I. Oh my uh, God. Oh, he's God. really good. Uh, he's good. And then his son on Bob's Burgers is named Gene. So it was like weird hearing H. John Benjamin say Gene, Gene. in a different context. That's true. Yeah. We had no place being over there. It was a war we couldn't win, Gene. Also, if you haven't watched Home Movies, the Adult Swim cartoon show, go fucking watch it, because it is great. I gotta agree with your mom, Brendan. Cursing is a sign of ignorance. But do you think- What the f was that, ref? Oh. Are you taking a Is that what you're doing, or are you making a call? Because if you can make a call, you make a call, but don't take a out there. Well, so then, because then Abby- Abby Bernstein. Oh my gosh. I love you, Abby Bernstein! <laughs> don't go. Yeah. <laughs> She lifts him up by his crotch. <laughs> Joe Latrulio is his partner or whatever, yep. his other guy. And what do I know him from? Brooklyn Nine-Nine? No. He's like in stuff. Okay. He's like that guy that's sure. like in a bunch of shit. Sure. And this. You can't get there and back by shut up. I am going to be with Abby Bernstein tonight. And if you don't like it, well, you know what? You could just go ahead and fuck yourself. <laughs> Because he's got to get back to Abby because he's got to have sex with her. And I mean, this is the single greatest edit of all time, I think. Him in the car. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think I can honestly say this might be my favorite edit. Wow. Because it is so good. Driving the car, even though we ain't got money. money. I'm so in love, love with you, honey. honey. Oh, oh, yeah. In the morning when I rise. Bring it to oh, fuck! <laughs> Just the way it comes out of no, I mean the first time I saw this, I fell out oh, of my man. chair. Like it was like oh, fuck! And then the, the way he's driving, it's broad daylight. And he just goes, ah! and then the way the car crashes into the tree is so like it would you'd have to aim for the tree. Yeah, like, he doesn't be so, not being like it's so good. Yeah. And the timing is perfection. Yep. It's funny too because every time I watch it, you don't I, know when it's coming. Well, not only do I not know when it's coming, but it's funny because I should know when it's coming because I always think to myself, "Wow, he actually has a good ball." Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. In the morning when I rise, bring it to I, I think it's the funniest edit ever. It just it gets me. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> but so then, I mean, so then he's like, well, there's no way we don't know how to get through these rapids. <laughs> the kids the whole time are just like, like they're not scared. Like they're acting terribly on purpose. Like they, they are. I mean, they're like smiling. They're yeah. like laughing actively. Like, ha, ah, we're stuck in this raft about to go over the water. Like they're just like, oh, no, oh, no. Like, it's great. <laughs> You're right. I have to go get him. And he just gets out of the raft and gets on that motorcycle. And then the motorcycle changed. <laughs> Ken Marino's running, running, running. And the stupid hay barrel. 
So dumb. Oh, it's oh, it's the best. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Joe Latrulio's stunt double. Oh, yeah. Is every every time the wig is horrific oh, my. on purpose. They just show full shots of him, just like I'm driving. <laughs> oh no, now it's him. It's my favorite. It's so good. Hey Neil, what's up? Victor abandoned the raft trip. <laughs> So he's driving, I'm, I love you, happy birthday. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna make it back for you. He's driving, he's so excited, and then it cuts I mean, to gosh. her and Gary making and out. Like, That's the song on the radio. The song on the radio. Wait for me, Abby Bernstein. Mm. Wait, wait, wait. What? I just wanna take off my shirt. <laughs> oh no, I just uh, wanna take my shirt off. Yeah. <laughs> Horrible seventies, like satin, no support bra. And I was like, yeah, they nailed it, <laughs> nailed it. So this is the start of like, oh, what's really going on with McKinley, right? All the girls are skinny dipping. Oh my god, yes. Holy shit, you guys, look, look, look. And they're just like in a general like circle, just like ah. Oh yeah, was... the skinny dipping yeah. is just. It's just, oh, here we are in our bras and whatever. Yeah. McKinley needs to experience the ultimate. And I think you know what I'm talking about. You mean penis and vagina? <laughs> no, dickhead. Sex. This is another one of my absolute favorite lines. It cuts back to them still watching them all skinny dipping or whatever, and it's totally an ADR. <laughs> the girl is like a beach ball, and Gary's just like, oh, throw, throw the ball. ball. Throw. Yes! <laughs> like the way he says it, it's like he just creamed his pants. <laughs> throw the ball. Yes! She's like, ah, so dumb. But I also crack up every time. Every time. Every time. <laughs> Throw the ball. Yes. Oh, we gotta find a girl for McKinley. Right. Oh, how about Debbie? No, no. she has mono. What about Debbie Debbie? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Debbie Debbie. No, no, not her. How about Debbie? Who? You know, Debbie Debbie. Oh, Debbie Debbie. No, she's his cousin. Uh, how about tall Debbie? Too tall. But then we find out what McKinley's oh my actually up to. Yes, and then this sex scene is, I mean, pretty hot. Well, and it's it's fairly graphic. Oh yeah. They really they get like the the butt fucking thrusting <laughs> 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 to not you know to not pull put to pull any punches. Yeah, <laughs> they get it. I mean, I thought they had a lot of chemistry, honestly, and yeah. it's not it's somewhat played for laughs, but not. Cause it's gay sex, right? You know what I mean? Like it's, it's not. It's that's not the joke. Like you idiots, he's getting more than you are ever exactly, getting. Exactly. Like, yeah. Exactly. Well, and then all the balls that are falling. Oh, right, the soccer ball. Falling in the ball. Um, I love that this is in this movie because it's so true in all those '80s homoerotic camp movies that you're like, wait, and then they went and fucked in the woods, right? Yeah. Oh no, they didn't. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's just like, yeah, they did. Yeah, they definitely did. I mean, and then we get, I think our, I think our biggest. Sleepaway Camp reference, where it's time for the big game. We're gonna play. Oh, yes. We're gonna be the underdogs. Yeah. I mean, he basically oh goodness, just like so says the plot from Bad News Bears. Yeah, it's a motley crew that you'd think would never even be able to win a single game. But guys, somehow we made it to the finals. And we try to come from behind at the last minute with some weird trick play that we made up, and we win the game. Well, it feels kind of trite and like overplayed. It's pretty well-worn territory. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can we love just it. So forget it? Yeah, yeah. Bro. Say we forget it. Is that how everybody feels? Yeah. yeah. Pretty fine. We obviously don't have the budget for right, for, for a, a base a big yeah. baseball scene. Yep. So yeah, they seem cool with it. We're just gonna yeah yeah they're fine with it. Yeah, I was it no cool. They were, they were cool with it. It was great. It's not a big deal. But it was like straight out of like oh should we have a five minute baseball scene? Oh yeah, from right. exactly. Essentially, we get the same capture the flag game from Sleepaway Camp. Oh absolutely. It's like oh we don't have enough extras. Yep. Run near the camera. <laughs> mill about. Run in a general circle pa as the camera pans. Just keep continue to be in the shot. Well, and then after their glorious lovemaking in the boathouse, we get their civil union down by the lake. And this was great. I mean, so I love it because they're like, because well, they say well, fag once. They keep when, subverting what yeah. you think is going to happen, right? So like, it looks like she's playing the flute. Oh wow, kinky. <laughs> It's not a joke that they're gay and getting married. Right. That's not the joke. You know, right. like it keeps 
subverting what, yes. you, what you think the joke is going to be. Yeah. <laughs> the way that 80 Miles says, McKinley's a fag with Ben. What are we going to do? It's so um, jockey and more. Right, and like, exact, it's stereotypical or whatever. Yes. It's a caricature. What, what are we going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? Oh, they're going to, you know, go and it's like, oh, God, terrorize right, them exactly. or, or prank them or do something awful or whatever. And then, so they've just, like laid that seed in yeah. there, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's so good. And then, I mean, we'll get... We'll get there. We'll get there when we get we'll there. We'll get there. Well, and Steve, the that nerd who... Oh, yeah. Oh, whatever. God. This your first summer here? Fifth. You were my counselor. Three times. Okay, now I'm the camp director, so if there's anything I can do to make your last day more enjoyable, just let me know. You want to be in the talent show or whatever? Yeah, we'll put you at the end. It'll be great. And Amy Poehler's just, like, irate. You're busting my balls, woman! <laughs> my kids are a bunch of amateurs, and the last thing I need today is some... Diabetic freak prancing around on stage making my life a living hell! Yes. Don't pick it up! Stop making it up! Stop it! <laughs> oh, she always wins! Pick it. Stop picking it up! I love Amy Poehler. I mean... This seems like it would have been the most fun set. Because they oh all had God. to actually live at the camp. Really? Yeah, because it was such a low budget. So they sure. all just lived there for whatever, 20 days or oh whatever. Oh my god, I love days. it. They were in the middle of nowhere, so they didn't have like anything to they go to. They were just do. being so they were just like amazing. hooking up, getting drunk, playing games, being crazy. I was just like, this is the most. This is I mean, so amazing. It would have been like going to summer camp with Amy Poehler and Paul Rudd and oh my god. Everybody. I, like, I just can't. With everyone oh that I god. love. Oh my god. The list of everyone that yeah. I love is attending <laughs> summer camp with me. I hope that when I grow up, I can come to your college and you can be my professor. Well, I'm, only I'm an associate professor. What does that mean? I'm less than. <laughs> hey, Beth, we're just having ourselves a little cry. We did a good cry. We did a good cry, Beth. You know, okay, and their kids, let's all go. And they all just scatter okay. and run off. And the and one then kid just runs. Mark from our kid is just like... And you see, like, you see him for, a, like, keep watching, keep watching, and he just, and they're having a whole scene talking, and he's still, and then you, and you think he's gone, and then, oh, he'll pop up again. It's so good. It's so good. Ah! <laughs> just running straight back into nowhere. Into the woods. And she gives her a whole oh, astrophysics God. speech. You know, where are you find the time to learn about astrophysics? I mean, the camp payroll and insurance to deal with. Keeping parents happy, supervising a young staff. And then he's like, you know, it was in 1908 when the first American summer camp was started at the Catskills. Oh, God, I love it's like it. they each get to share their information. At the barbecue, we get the visual, the visual sight gag of Elizabeth. <laughs> hey, Andy. Mm. <laughs> oh, my God, it's so gross. It's barbecue like sauce all over your and face. Like and it's stuck in her teeth. Well, it keeps getting bigger. So it starts, it's just kind of here. Yeah. And then there's some on her forehead. Oh, God, and then there's some over here. And it just gets getting bigger. It tastes like a burger. I don't like you anymore. <laughs> it tastes like a burger. I don't like you anymore. This has always been the mystery scene in the goat pen. Oh. With the flannel and the sweatshirt. I mean, I love it. Yeah. But it's definitely a mystery, right? It's like, sure. what's this exactly? What is this it's, exactly? It's, it's the furthest out there oh, sure. of like... What are we referencing here, right? Katie and Coop go to the goat pen. Oh, it's really cold. Oh, oh do you want to borrow my sweatshirt? Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, now I'm cold. cold. Do you want to borrow my flannel? Okay. Okay, but it's my favorite, so you have to give it back. Right now? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just swap, the swapping of the shirts. The goats walking around. It's just so weird. You're going to have to give it back. Now? Yeah. Ring, 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 ring. Oh. <laughs> Ron? Yeah. It's Ron. I want you back. No. No, Ron. It's over. Goodbye. Yeah. No, Ron. 
the gusto with which she hangs up the fake phone is... Oh my god, it's great. I love the theater. Maybe just because that's where, it, like, I, that's my your, heart your, belongs. That's your safe space. Yeah. But well, I, that every, I mean, it's so, so good so. that, like, everyone's obsessed with Godspell. Like, it's very much a moment in time. Sure. Like, they really captured 1981. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Day by day. Day by day. Day by day. Stop. Oh, you guys, I feel like I'm watching regional theater. <laughs> God, am I in the Cleveland Playhouse or something? Your craft is a muscle. You need to exercise it. So then we're back in the mess hall. Oh my God. Ben McKinley, this, this is, is for, for you. you. It's a chaise lounge. I hope it fits. <laughs> we didn't know if we'd go with the rest of yours. Oh, this is going to go perfect with the throw that Beth gave us. The big crate and barrel box. Oh my God. I love it so much. So great. I love it so it's much. So great. Because you're just waiting for them to be like, oh, you fuck you, like, boo. Right, you know, right, like, right. Blood bucket or whatever. Right, right. You know, no. Hey! McKinley and Ben. This is for you. There's a receipt. You can return it if you want. <laughs> Amanda Klein. Jessica Azaria. Ira Stevenberg. Saul... Zimmerstein. Jessica Azaria! Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, Hank Azaria actually went to that camp because it's a real camp. And Janine Garofalo saw his name on one of the walls. You know, like, this is who came in 1970, sure. whatever, and called him and was like, hello, did like, there's not that many Hank Azarias out there or whatever. And he's like, oh yeah, I fully went to that camp. So she put that name in there as like a little like, Love it. Jessica Azaria. Love it. <laughs> Saul Rubenstein. I could listen to her. Oh my God. Just spout <laughs> Jewish cliched names. 10 minutes. If you want to smear mud on your ass, smear mud on your ass. Just be honest about it. Jean. <laughs> If you want to smear mud on your ass, just be honest about it. I put it to you. Camp Firewood as we spend the last dinner together. Be proud of who you are. Let me get another pottery smash. Oh, oh my God. I love this out of nowhere. Like, this is literally like, why? The, I love it. To you. Be who you want to be. Yeah. I'm gonna go hump the fridge. He really what, earnestly humps that fridge. What did you say? Oh, he you? does. He really, it's like a slow grind though. It's not really like a hump. It's like right. a, I'm gonna go grind on the fridge. It's a lot. I liked it. It was it was a, a scene and I appreciated it. As the, he wheels the fridge took, back out. They took, you know, they took their time. Yeah, they took the time. They're dedicated. Yeah. They took the time. So he's like, I'm gonna go be myself or whatever. And he, and he opens the door and Amy, Amy Poehler's just like, <laughs> like oh, the yeah. goes everywhere. And he's <laughs> just like. I mean, Gene gives like an Oscar. It's like, his, oh, it's yeah. literally his oh, Oscar clip, right? Yes. Look at me, Ma! be proud of who I am. So silly. Oh boy. So we get our, our another really fabulous cliche parody of the I love you speech. Yes. I love this scene so much. It's so well written. Yes. I love the way you laugh and I love the way your hair smells and I I love it that sometimes for no reason you're late for shul and I don't care that you're bow-legged and I don't care that you're bilingual and I don't care if sometimes for no reason you're late for shul and I don't care if you're bow-legged and if you're bilingual <laughs> bilingual that's the best one I don't care if you're bilingual. bilingual well all I know is that I would have said no to every single person on your list because I've I've always wanted you you're like, oh, but also this is nonsense. <laughs> it's simultaneously actually really sweet yes. and actually really stupid. Yes, exactly. Beth and David Hyde Pierce are down by the lake. Oh my god. Oh my god, Beth, I have to tell you something. something. It's really important. Okay, what is it? This isn't the time or the place. This isn't the time or the place to discuss it. Beth, meet me at the picnic table in ten seconds. I'll tell you all about it. Okay. Let's get right to it. You may recall 10 seconds ago I asked you to join me here by the picnic table so I can tell you what's going on. Like from this point on, Janine and Garofalo's acting turns and oh, yes. becomes purposely bad. Oh, uh, oh my god! Oh my god! Like she becomes like overly dramatic. Yeah. Like, There's a Aaron piece of Skylab and it's Korean, right? So it's like, oh my god! 
you know, it's just like, oh, it's so fucking funny. But it's so perfect the way she does it. Oh my God. And there's more? We have no way of pinpointing exactly where it's going to land. It could kill us all. Jesus. Well, and then this, like, they built this Skylab okay. deterrent with yes. a grape nuts box and the spam and the colander on it. Like, well, it's just... well, cause, oh, because they're all like, they're all dejected. Oh, oh what are we going to do? There's no way. Unless. No. Unless. <laughs> no. I just got word that if we pull this off, I could be up for the Hopkins Prize for Physics. <gasps> the Hopkins, baby. What a dream. You would get tenure. Like as if they've been married for like 20 years. Right. They didn't meet this morning. <laughs> We'd have to create a random, random sequence of numbers between 0 and 20. And <laughs> Unless we have a supercomputer. Any dungeon master worth his salt doesn't leave the house without his 27 day. day. Like what is it? 7? Nine? What'd you say? Was it seven or was it nine? Nine! 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 Six. What was it? nine. Okay. Another fabulous montage of Jean training Coop to be... Yes! Cool? I guess. I'm not sh Training him to be... When he teaches him to dance and run and Mr. Miyagi chopsticks. The, yeah, they get the, the He's bug. He's in therapy. Yeah. Oh, Remember yes. he's like in his robe, yes. like speaking his truth. Da, 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 da. Yeah, nonsense. we did oh, it. Yeah, yeah, it's great. They're in the dance studio and he like, oh, I can't oh, do yeah. it. He runs to the desk. Oh, oh, he's just so upset. <laughs> the acting is so good. <gasps> it's him. Victor. Victor, Victor. We lost him, God damn. I got him. I got him. Where is he? He's calling from inside the camp. The only other phone is in the infirmary. This oh, right. is also where well, her then, acting goes like extremely. <laughs> I mean, this is when, because like, this movie doesn't have a dance, right? No. That's one of, like, it doesn't have a big sure. dance. And it doesn't have a ton of, like, the horror, like, Friday the 13th stuff. Sure. But sure. this is the scene where that happens. Ah! 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 What's the matter? The phone! The phone! Where's the fucking phone? In the bed. Ah! Ah! Just throwing stuff, throwing. Where's the goddamn phone? <laughs> Oh, and then he goes up to Abby, who's just <laughs> making out with someone else. With a child? Yeah. Victor, where are you? And then he cuts to the kids in the, like, oh, cuts yeah, back the to rapids. them, still in the rapids, <laughs> like, oh no, ah. we're here. <laughs> Definitely at least half of them are laughing. <laughs> oh, 100%. They're just like, ha, ah. oh no. Oh, no. Ah. You're doing all this Skylab stuff, and he's, uh, and the the paper, the, oh, yeah, the report comes out. And he goes, oh, fuck my cock! <laughs> oh, fuck my cock! That one really got me this time. Me too. This me too. Oh, oh, fuck my cock! Oh, I mean, we will talk about the audience cutaways at the talent show. <laughs> it's every fucking thing. It's everything. <laughs> Boo! Right from the Borscht Belt, we've got Alan Schimpberg. For breakfast, we had to eat scrambled pterodactyl eggs <laughs> and raptor bacon. So this was funny because I always was so confused where it's like, I always assumed that it was just an act that he was putting on. Michael Showalter. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, well, like, you know, like, but, or Coop was... Right, no. But no, it's just Michael Showalter it's playing just, another character. It's just a joke. Yeah. It's just a George Burns joke. Uh, yep. Yep. I was so oh. old. It's terrible, terrible old man jokes. Oh my god. And then, <laughs> In the Stone Age. <laughs> I'm so old. They're just like losing their fucking minds. <laughs> Zach, Zach Orth cut away his oh laugh. My god. It's like he, it, like if his head had exploded <laughs> scanner style, like I wouldn't have been surprised. Just like. <laughs> <laughs> well, they really nailed the camp talent show oh yeah coming up next the broom balancer you know like there was really a, there always was a real wide range of 
talents. talents. You know what I mean? Coop actually walked, you know. Right, he walks oh, in, his, in his sleepaway camp outfit. I mean, yep. he's just in yep. short shorts and a crop top. Yep. And a sweatband. Uh, sweatband. <laughs> it was full sleepaway. So everyone's double takes. <laughs> Paul Red's double take was the best one. Yeah. What? <laughs> Hey, Katie, I'm leaving. And then he gives it, this is for you. And that teeny tiny oh little box. Oh my God, box. the box and then the whole shirt comes <laughs> out. Like, oh my God. So dumb. And then we get the big finale showstopper yes, yes, by put... Steve. And it was like that Maxwell cassette ad, you know, with the guy in the chair and the wind blowing, you know, like like famous ad campaign. Oh, and Like the cassette tape, like yeah. with the speakers. I'm yeah. like, whoa. Oh. I mean, I guess it was also like a bit of carry. I will use my telekinetic, telekinetic wind to... Everyone's like wow. joyful faces as the wind is just blowing them over. That one guy that gets hit by that fucking bench. Yeah. That bench just like whacks that guy. <laughs> and then Elizabeth thanks and Abby to start making... Well, oh, yeah. guess we should make out, yeah. right? Yeah, oh, all right. I love it. And then he gets his slow clap because Skylab... Oh, I mean, yes. they're not clapping because no, of because Skylab. Skylab. I mean, the no nerds idea. are like, yeah, yeah, we nailed it. It's like, chunk, this huge fucking <laughs> piece of Skylab falls. And then it just like soft lands. Oh, yeah. It's, you oh, know, yeah. Like, it's, it's still in one piece. Like, it's not burned into earth, up on or fire, not... like make a divot. No, it's so just good. like, and there's Skylab. We did it. And then everyone slow claps for Steve. Oh, my God. Yeah. So then it's the last morning of camp. Oh, I'm gonna miss you so much. I'll write you, you every, every single day. day. I'm gonna, you never will. No. We did. I mean, we don't write, well, we do write each other every day now. That's true. That's true. So. Maybe camp, maybe that, maybe that was true. <laughs> Janine and David and Pierce, honey, I got the Hopkins. Oh my God. And it's just some like sports it's trophy like, or whatever. I knew this would happen. I would meet you and fall in love with you and you would leave me. Wait, hold on, Beth. I've already told them I need an apartment for two people. Hands it to someone off camera. <laughs> 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 it's like it's gone. It's just gone. I know we've been having trouble with, you know, but I was thinking when the time comes, we can adopt. Shh. It's happened. I'm pregnant. It's happened. Yeah. I'm pregnant. Well, right. oh. well, you know, you've had trouble trying. You know, what I've had so much trouble trying <laughs> for the baby. Honey, it's happened. In four hours. He handed that trophy. I lost I, my mind. Me too. I lost my mind. All the indoor kids have their moment around Skylab. Oh, yes. And Mork from Ork is just like... <laughs> and then the Renfair kid finally gets a lot of dialogue and you realize oh, his like fake British accent that goes in and out. In and out. <laughs> well, I'm really going to miss you guys. I think it's going to be... Oh, yes. I mean, it's like really bad. I feel like this entire summer which kind of sucked, has been rejuvenated by the events of the past 24 hours. And then we get the, the final breakup between Katie and Coop. Oh, this is iconic. I mean, last night was fun, but I'm 16 and I'm all about, all about sex. sex. And Andy's hot. hot. I mean, like, cut from marble hot. And, and I like you more than I like Andy, Coop, but I'm 16. And maybe it'll be a different story, like, when I'm ready to get married, but right now, I am entirely about sex. And she's like, I'm 16. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> right. Little, little pigtail. So that's where my priorities are right now. Sex. Specifically with Andy and not with you. But you're really nice. Specifically with Andy and not, and, with, and you. not with you. <laughs> I love it. But so I still much. want to be friends though. I always wondered who that was driving him away in the car, that old guy. Thank you! I was like, is that his dad? Is that her dad? What's going on here? Confused. There is a post credits sequence. Ten years Ten later. Ten years later. And it shows the clock and it's 9.35 and Sackworth walks in. Oh, oh, sorry, I was late, guys. I thought we said 9.30. 9:30. No, we, we said, said 9, so, so we'd, we'd all be, be here at 9.30. Black. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm late. I thought we said 9.30. No, we said 9, so we could be here by 9.30. And they're all dressed like 80s yuppies. You know, yeah, like they're yeah. all like adults, yeah, okay. you know, or whatever, like yeah. in the oversized suits and oh, everything. Yeah. I love it. Well, so, I mean, if you haven't watched What Happened American Summer and you just listened to us quote it the entire time. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Because I'm not. I you mean, can I'm... still go watch it and enjoy oh, every minute of it. It really is a gem. Yeah. Like, it's truly a find. Yes. It, I mean, 
it made no money when it came out. Sure. It has since become a huge, obviously a huge yeah. cult movie and they made all the Netflix stuff about it, but like it made all of its money back, obviously. Oh, yeah. It's one of those movies that you're like, I can't wait to show it to somebody who hasn't sure. seen it. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, you haven't seen Wet Out? Oh my God, I can't wait. Yeah. Like you feel special for knowing about it. I mean, less so now. Because yeah, it's right, because it's like so, But yeah. like at the time it was like, oh my God. <gasps> so I, I fucking adore this movie. I fucking love it. I said no! I said no! <laughs> Cheers! Cheers.